I think that uh, a lot of the staff in particular, and I would extend that really to faculty and students who use our resources, are uh, sensitive to the news and the big cases and the fear mongering in a sense about uh, not overstepping safe space. The code allows us to work with staff, with faculty, with students to educate them about what the principles of fair use really are. Not that it's a fine ironclad set of answers, but it's a set of guidelines to think about as they look at what do I put in my course. Uh, a library staff member who teaches and is using library resources, what are they safe in doing? Uh, and how do they provide the attribution and the recognition for scholarship and protect the rights of a copyright holder in that process? And I think that fair uh, use haven, if you will, uh, pushing the envelope a little bit, encouraging staff to think about risk, but also think about opportunity at the same time, is really, really critical and why the code really helps in getting them to think more broadly about what their risk uh, comfort levels are. It is about risk. But, you know, creating new knowledge and encouraging new thought is a risk in, in and of itself. And that's what the Academy is really all about, is how do we use all of the resources and knowledge and ideas of the past to create new innovative thought and ideas in the future. So we've used the code in a couple of ways. First and foremost, we did the orientation sessions. Uh, and what I found interesting, for example, were the questions being raised by, say, the chair of our library committee, on uh, the faculty senate library committee, mm -hmm. in terms of, I didn't know you could do that. Uh, is that really something that can be done? Do I really own those sorts of things? Am I really in control of my scholarship? Uh, all this set of questions that now we can talk about in new and different kinds of ways. And that it's not about, um, here's the prescription, and if you follow these 96 steps, you can be assured, because this isn't a game in which that works that way. Our council then has taken some of our enthusiasm, shared it across the system because we do work together, and ultimately it is the council at the Office of the President representing all of us together uh, that is there. And so she's helped us take that to a system-wide level that will look at how do we make this part of uh, practice, not um, guidelines or policy, but practice within the whole university system. That helps us then get it out to where it's recognized by faculty in their execution of how to, to look at fair use. Code, the whole process, not just the final document, but the whole process of looking at these as important issues and how can libraries, how can research libraries take a firm stand against the principles of scholarship and of the academy and of, as I said, the creation of new knowledge. The whole essence of the Copyright Act was to promote arts and sciences. The academy forever has been about promoting the arts and the sciences and creating the next generation of scholars. If we're going to have a, a good next generation of scholars, they have to be ready and able and willing to deal in this arena of fair use. Mm -hmm.